that. All right. So, hi, everyone. This is uh, my talk about how I get more done with less in Terraform. Um, I just introduced myself. Oops, let me introduce myself. So, I'm a senior engineer at Lab3. Uh, I've been doing Terraform and Azure for about four or five years now. Um, and uh, now I have the pleasure of working with Lab3 and doing the same thing with a number of clients rather than one client at a time. Um, I'm going to talk in roughly this order about what problems I am solving. I have an extra slide in there about what problems I am not solving. Uh, I'm going to talk about how a lot of people sort of getting started with Terraform and trying to do the best they can end up. I'm going to talk about where I think you need to take your code to to become more efficient and more relaxed with your time management about trying to get all the things done. And then I'm going to introduce three phases to cut from where you start out to where you need to be, and then some suggestions from where to go from there. And then there'll be a short demo. All right. So typically, with the work that I do, I'm building out environments to support product teams or application teams. So an environment is a very, hopefully, is a tightly designed thing. Uh, you know all the components that are going go into it, but you're going to replicate that work uh, a couple of times. You're probably going to build a dev environment, a test environment, and a prod environment at a minimum, and then it tends to expand from there. And sometimes you can be building an environment for each developer. Um, those environments evolve over time as the product or process evolves. So you need to evolve them. You want all the environments to maintain the same shape. I, I try to vary between shape and size. So you want them all to look like an apple, but some are small apples and some are big apples and some of them are ginormous apples. But they're all just an apple um, and you just want to maintain the shape and just plug in the varying pieces through a config arrangement. You want to be able to support that your team gets bigger, your service gets bigger, or the use of your service or a process or application gets bigger without you having to work harder every time that happens. So that's what I'm trying to solve. I'm not solving the problem of you building enterprise-wide services, uh, you know, your initial cloud adoption frameworks or your, your cross-enterprise compliance controls or cloud controls. Um, that's a different layer. I'm building potentially on top of that. Uh, where you have an individual team that you are trying to help out. So, yeah, here's an example of what you might see if you were looking at someone's um, code base. Um, you can see dev, test, and prod are in there. And then there's a few other things in there that muddy the waters. Is prod new the real prod or are you still in progress? Are you using test temp right now or is it just a, a bug fix um, process? And Matt's gone in there and made something that is like an orange instead of an apple. Um, so that's a pretty typical arrangement. What you typically see um, when you actually start digging into there is that there is no alignment to a design. They've grown organically. There's probably large amounts of copy pasta going on. There's no modules as far as you can tell. Uh, the CICD. If it is there, it might be different in every case. Some might be using GitHub Actions. They might be using Azure Pipelines. They might be using a code builder in AWS. Who knows? And the storage of the state for your Terraform might be different in each case. Dev might be your local storage. Prod might be stored in an S3 bucket. Test might be going out to a remote storage of somewhere or in a database. You just don't know because every single one of those directories has really no relationship to each other. That concept and where I kind of went with my development of my infrastructure was inspired to a large part by the talk, this talk by Nikki Watt, where she talks about evolving your infrastructure with Terraform and getting out to the Terra services model and so on. It's a very interesting talk. And she talks about that initial assembly layer and accidentally deleting pride when you made an innocuous change and so forth. This is where I think you need to be. It's very clear you've got a configuration that describes the size of things. You've got one definition for an environment, which is the shape, and you're doing some sort of module assembly to get as much reuse as possible. If we have a little bit of a look inside config, we can see we've even split the config out to things that in global, they don't change no matter what environment you're talking to. 
subscription, that might be a little bit of an Azure specific thing. You can call it whatever you want, but I typically split that in name between prod and non-prod. Um, so you can rename that as you feel appropriate. And environment is where the definitions for each environment uh, can be captured. So that will be contained stanzas that uh, say, dev is a two CPU VM, test is a four CPU VM, and prod is a 16 CPU VM. But it's the same VM in every environment. The same for modules. We can see each component that we're going to be assembling our pieces through. And in environment, this is probably a more sophisticated way to describe your environment rather than having a one-to-one -one mapping with Event Hub, Key Vault, and Network again. We're sort of building out what your development team is actually focused on. So they're building out products that focus on data services and event handling. And then you start assembling your infrastructure to support those in each of those directories. My demo is a little bit simpler than this, but that's um, I consider this kind of where you may want to go to so you can cleanly map your infrastructure to the process application service that you're supporting your developers in. When you're moving from that problematic problem uh, space that I showed about with replication and no idea of what's really happening, phase one is to create a single environment definition. So you move all your code to a environment agnostic definition, which means there's basically a lot of lookups to say, given the name of the environment, what is the, what is the value that I need? And then all of the code just becomes agnostic. It just, it's just plug and play. And we'll see that in the demo. The environment is passed in as a parameter. So you'll use the word dev or test or prod to basically switch through your different configuration definitions. And they will switch you either through prod or non-prod um, at the higher level as well. And you make heavy use of the module assembly pattern um, uh, to cut down on the amount of replication. You have that centralized config that I talked about that's keyed by environment, gets keyed by subscription and unchanging globals, regardless of what piece you're building. Um, and then you do module assembly, either with locally defined modules, you might be lucky enough to have other people within um, your organization who've written modules and placed them into version control, um, or they've placed them into a module registry, a la the registry within um, Terraform Enterprise, um, or it might be um, calling uh, pieces through remote state lookups and uh, injection, uh, which is quite an advanced usage, which we won't cover in this talk. Phase two, once you've got that um, single environment definition and you've got some config um, and you've got some modules, is uh, I'm a really big fan of not having to manage your own state. Um, I much prefer Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise to do our state management for us. Within the solution I'm going to describe today, when you start using workspaces, which is that second block in, on this slide, there is a complexity. It's the trick um, that I've discovered. Um, and um, we'll talk about that in phase three. Um, we map our environments to the state files for our workspaces. That's all handled automatically for you by Terraform. Um, so you no longer have to work out where is my state file. Um, the use of workspaces um, is a powerful concept within Terraform. Uh, your Terraform declarations are updated slightly to use a prefix rather than um, name block, and things get populated automatically for you as you uh, execute the Terraform workspace select command. And there are ways to use environmental variables to drive that as well. If you're not using Terraform Cloud or Enterprise, using the Terraform workspace command populates a variable that you can use called terraform.workspace. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that today. I'm going to demonstrate the Terraform Cloud uh, version because I think it's more interesting and, and more effective and more efficient for you as a, as a um, DevOps engineer. And you need to move to CICD. Uh, so I'm a strong proponent that all ClickOps um, access in the cloud portals is removed and the only the, um, the service principal or agent um, is able to make the changes for you. So you have to commit the code and have an agent execute that code for you. Uh, you have all readability, but um, you can't click ops anything. You invoke it via DevOps pipeline. But I'm also a strong proponent of allowing Terraform plan at least to run locally. Uh, it helps speed up the development if you can see the effect of your changes before having to commit to um, 
to version control and then invoke the pipeline. Um, debugging locally is a lot easier than doing it through a DevOps pipeline. Phase three, which is where we start to bring in the Terraform cloud and workspace support. So I note this here, and it's probably a warning, Terraform could, or HashiCorp could change this at any point. Officially, the Terraform docs say, uh, if you use workspaces, the work, that Terraform.workspace is populated with the word default, no matter what workspace you declare. So we have to find a way to work around that so that we can populate the, the workspace we want to talk to. Uh, and we do that by, in this case, I'm just using a, an environmental variable called workspace, which we define within the Terraform Cloud uh, workspace, which we'll see in a moment. Um, you have a variable within your Terraform code of the same name. When you're um, doing CICD, you define that explicit um, workspace, which helps with the Terraform init call on your CICD server. Tying this all together means that that environment gets injected into your code and all of the mechanisms you've used locally now work on Terraform Cloud. You now have proper state management, you have run management, you've got permissions that you can bring in to execute, um, uh, to allow people to execute or not execute your code. Um, you can bring in all of that power that Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise bring into you, uh, module storage and distribution and so forth, um, and have the power of a single code base uh, and switching around it with um, uh, workspaces. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces in there. I sort of recommend as you mature your code, you can look at how to use modules in different ways. Uh, and you can also look at the Terra state pattern, which uses the remote state, but that's a slightly higher concept, allows you to bring in almost aspect oriented code at, um, concepts of injecting policy, logging and audit on resources without you having to explicitly manage them. Uh, but that's a that's a, a growth phase, if you will. All right, so let's go to the demo. First thing I'm going to show in the demo is my Terraform cloud setup. Um, so you can see I've got three uh, workspaces here. Ignore the bootstrap one. I've got dev, I've got test, I've got prod. We'll just click into one of them to show basically how each of them looks. The key to this is this workspace variable, which is a value of dev. If we use the power of rest and jump to another one, you'll see that the workspace here is test and it continues through on that pattern. If we then jump to the code I'm going to present, hopefully this is nice and clear for you. First piece I want to show is our Terraform block. And the important thing here is that we're using this prefix. <clears throat> The prefix is what's going to switch us around between um, environments. Um, and what we do in the variables is we have a workspace variable that allows us to inject configuration values as we need them. If we pull in our config, you can see that we are looking up our workspace values. So the value of workspace is going to vary between dev and test and prod. Each time you see var workspace, you can think it's just going to be the word dev or test or prod. If we have a look at our config, and the environment one will be the most interesting one here. I've only got one value here just to keep things simple, but you can see when I'm building out my key vaults, I can key what size I want, but the shape is always the same. The variable is what's the environment we're talking to. We have this, and then we basically output the one that matches our environment. Same thing happens with uh, subscriptions. In this case, we are defining a few subscription IDs, a few names, and a few regions. So our non-prod is always deploying in Australia East, and our prod is always deploying in Australia Southeast, um, and it's driven by the subscription that we pass in. The modules, I won't go into too much detail. They're just completely driven by um, the usage. You can see here when I build a key vault, it's just basically passing everything off. This is the simpler case rather than the grouping case I was talking about. If we now jump to the more nervous part where we get to a terminal. So I'm in the environment directory here. Um, I, have an, I use an abbreviation for Terraform, so just keep up with me on that one. 
show you which uh, workspace I'm in now. I'm in test. So if I run a plan, it's just my alias for Terraform plan. I'm going to reach out to my Terraform cloud instance and ask it to run my Terraform plan for me against the state that it is currently holding. And it will automatically switch to exactly the right um, <coughs> workspace. Um, it will inject exactly the right variable and it will do exactly the right lookups into my configuration. And we just have to wait for it to catch up to us. So we can see here where those variables were before. We've got test here. We've got our environment being automatically injected into our tags. Everything is going to run exactly the way that we want it to run. And if I now say I want to do exactly the same thing, but I want to do it against dev. There we go. And I run my Terraform plan again. I haven't had to change code. I haven't had to change directories. I haven't had to set anything other than what workspace am I currently concerned with. It will go through exactly the same thing. This one's going to be a slightly more complex output because I already do have some state in there and, and the configuration has changed markedly since I last ran it. So it's going to ask to make a lot more changes. But that's kind of the point in a way. You, you've only got one set of code, but they map to different state files. You only have to think about one code base. Um, and we can see here the right values, again, have been automatically injected everywhere. I wanted to talk about one, a few uh, extra things that you need to be aware of. When you're talking to Terraform Cloud, it pushes your code up regardless of whether you're running on CI, CD or running locally. So it's going to upload your code. You may not want everything to go. So you can tell it don't send certain things by uh, defining a .terraform ignore file, which has the normal glob patterns to ignore. Um, there's one other complication. If we go back to my editor, you can see I have, if I just shrink everything up, so you just have to look at the top levels. I've got my environment here. Sorry, I've got my environment definition here. I'm looking at a file and I go, go up one directory, go over to the modules directory and have a look at the key vault module. There's one quirk on this with Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise. If we come back to our settings here, to make that work, you have to tell it whereabouts in the code base that's uploaded you're starting from. If you don't do that, it basically says, I can't find your modules. So those are traps for uh, young players. Um, so that's basically the demo there, switching around between um, different environments, but with one, let me do this one, with one code base. I, I make changes, I just run them through each environment. I just change the config as I need to. And, um, and that's basically it. I might be open for any comments that have been posted while the talk's going on because I can't, I can't see them. <laughs>